I've been a woodworker for, well, all of my adult life anyway. And so cutting wood with every kind of tool imaginable has been what I do. So it all started back in high school when I was working for my dad. My dad was a builder. My brother and I had to frame houses for the summertime job. That was pretty hot and pretty uh, exhausting. I, I think both of us really didn't like it that much because it was such hard work and our dad uh, was a slave driver and made us work uh, very hard all day and he didn't have any employees because all the people that he tried to get to work for him uh, could only last for about a week and then they would quit. Anyway. As a young 18-year-old person being in the building trade, uh, it was time to start collecting some tools. Now, you know, of course, when you're young, you don't have any money. You can't have uh, big, expensive, fancy tools in your shop. Well, actually, you don't have a shop because you live with your parents, right? Like I did. So, actually, I lived at home till I was 22, but no shame in that. So, let's talk about the table saw, just the table saw today. So I have to say this about the table saw. It is a very dangerous tool. Should only be used by somebody who is capable of operating it and who understands the dangers and how to avoid them. I am very fortunate. I have all of my fingers and my thumbs. So I can still do that. I grew up around power tools in the shop. I also had uh, some very good teachers that taught me how to use these tools safely. My dad and my stepdad, thank you both very much for uh, teaching me everything that you have about woodworking and how to do it safely so that I can continue to do this and provide for my family and uh, have a career doing this. So this, is, this has been my life's passion is woodworking and home building. So I'd love to be able to continue to do that with all my digits. first table saw I had was a Craftsman contractor saw. There must be millions and millions of these things scattered across America. It's kind of heavy. It's got a cast iron top, so it's not super portable. It has a nice metal frame, uh, so it's pretty sturdy. And uh, in general, it's a very good saw for anybody starting out woodworking to own. I really liked it, actually. When I first was using it, it was, it was a nice saw. Now, the standard fence on a Craftsman contractor saw is not that great, in my opinion at least. So I was constantly having to check and make sure that that fence was parallel to the blade. And that's a little bit of a hassle. Really, you just wanna be able to lock the fence down and know that it locks parallel to the blade. So the first thing to get changed out on this saw was the fence. I just happened to have access to a fence system off of an older Unisaw, a Delta Unisaw, like the really old ones. I think it was about a 50 inch fence, maybe something like that. And I built this extension table for the, uh, for the contractor saw to make it more like a shop style saw. That helped a lot. It would slide nice and easy and lock down nice and firm. The next thing, I took some scrap plywood and I enclosed the bottom of the stand. It had an open stand, which let dust just pour out everywhere and it would fill up the air in my shop and it'll choke out anybody. So in order to start getting the dust under control, uh, I put plywood on the sides of that. It's just like angle iron stand. And then I drilled a hole and I put a dust port in the side of it. And I hooked up a little four inch uh, Delta vacuum, like the stand up kind that has the bags. And uh, when you turn them on, they go poof. And then a big old cloud of dust comes off of it. But it still caught more dust than just having the dust pouring out everywhere of the saw. Now, if you've watched any of our videos, you know that I just have to try to improve stuff. If I have something and I'm not quite happy with it, believe me, I am gonna be scratching my head trying to figure out different ways that I can make improvements to make my life easier, to make things less frustrating, and uh, to make tools more efficient or operate better. Let's talk about the motor. So the motor, it comes with like a one horsepower motor, and I wanna say it's a 3450 RPM motor. So uh, it was a little bit weak and it would bog down, even just cutting like a two by four, like a spruce two by four, uh, it would bog down and not have enough power. I had a friend that had a Baldor motor and it was one horsepower and I thought, ooh, that's gotta be better. So I got the Baldor motor and I put it on and then silly me, I didn't realize till it was too late that the motor was only half of the RPM. So it was a 1725, I think. So you need a lot of blade speed 
on a table saw. I don't know what the blade speed actually is, but I can tell you that it wasn't enough when it was half of what it should be. So I tried to get some pulleys. I got like a five inch pulley and down to like a two inch pulley or something like that. And, uh, and I was trying to speed up the blade speed and use a motor that was too slow to spin the blade faster. Well, that did work some, but then that motor was bogging down some too. So I ended up kind of shifting the pulleys around a little bit so where it was a little bit of a compromise. The blade was still going a little too slow, but I got the power back, okay? And that seemed to be more useful than blade speed at that point in time. And then I upgraded the belt to a one of those red link style belts. They're supposed to be anti-vibration. So I started getting these projects lined up where I was building dining room tables and I was using some really thick hemlock. These were two by tens rough sawn and so they were a real two inches thick, 10 inches wide. I was using four boards for every table making a 40 inch wide dining table and I was making like 10 of them. So I was trying to rip this material uh, to get the edges straightened up with this craftsman saw and guess what? I realized during my first table build that I I couldn't even cut through one piece without the saw overheating. I, I couldn't even cut like an eight foot long rip in a piece of two inch thick stock. And the saw, it would not do it. It would overheat and shut down. And I realized I can't do my work. I can't do my job with this saw. So I knew I was gonna make a little bit of money building and selling these tables. So I decided before I build the tables, I'm gonna buy a new saw. And I had already had a saw picked out in my mind. It was the Delta Unisaw and not the older style one. Those are great, but the newest style of Delta Unisaw has a lot of cool features that I was already just Jones and a half. And I knew that the time was right. I knew that I was gonna make the money to pay for the saw with the tables, because I didn't have the money to pay for the saw in my pocket. I think I paid like $2,600 for the saw. I can't really remember, but I will tell you that I knew I was gonna make money on tables and I was gonna use the saw to make tables and it just made sense to me. It was time. So guess what? I just got on Amazon and I found the saw and it was free shipping. They brought it right to my front door because this thing is heavy. I'll do a little walkabout and show you the things that I really like about this saw and why I got this one in particular. So here is the current Delta Unisaw that I'm using. This is a Model 36L300. I think. I don't know what all that means. But it came with this awesome extension table here. It came with the Bismeyer fence that you see right there. I think it even came with that awesome little push stick. That's a nice push stick right there. Uh, you can see that it has a dust port. This has a five inch dust port that I have hooked up to my central vac system. It's got a 220 volt motor. This one is a three horsepower version. They make a five horsepower version, but I thought that I didn't need the five horsepower. This one seems to have plenty of power just like it is. One of the most awesome features here that I knew that I wanted in this saw is the fact that both of your cranks are on the front of the machine. This one adjusts the height up and down and it has a lock. That's nice. This one adjusts the tilt. Cut. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so I wanna show you how easy it is to adjust the tilt on this blade. This is like my favorite feature, and again, one of the major reasons that I really wanted this saw. I mean, I thought about this saw for a long time before I was ever able to purchase it. So, check this out. You unlock the locking mechanism. Let's see, which way does it go? This way. Oh, look how fast it goes. Whoa, we're really going fast, slow down. All right, all the way up to 45 degrees. Boom dead on 45. Usually the tilt knob is over here under the table and it's really hard to reach. So I wanted to reiterate that this feature, the tilt mechanism on this saw, especially being on the front of the saw, was one of the most attractive features about this thing. It's got a nice recessed start button so you don't hit it accidentally. And then it's got this multi-angle stop button so you can hit it with your leg or your knee or your hand. If you're holding a board and you don't have your hands free, you can just easily bump that with your leg and shut the machine down and get the blade to stop. It does have an electronic uh, stop on the blade that makes it slow down quickly after you shut it off. So this saw came with two extension wings, we'll call them, that are cast iron. There's one, it's about 10 or 12 inches wide. And then the other one here that you have to uh, assemble once you get the machine. They don't come installed, so you have to flush up the metal really nice. 
And then this other extension table right here. It's not the best, but uh, it works okay. And then the fence here, I really love this fence. It's got this giant handle. Show them how it works, right? It's got this really giant handle with a cam lock and uh, it locks down nice and firmly and it's adjustable. And then, uh, this thing will rip all the way over to 36 inches. Three feet, actually slightly past, but uh, really three feet is the max rip on this thing. And I really like this scale because it is actually accurate and you can see it's adjustable with these little screws so that if it's off by a little bit, you can adjust it and make it precise. I still check with a tape measure if I'm doing a critical measurement, but for general rip this and that, I just slide it over and use the scale. So a super important feature of a professional saw is the riving knife. Now my old saw, the Craftsman job site saw, did not have a riving knife. If you don't know, this is the riving knife. What this does is it keeps the wood from pinching on the back side of the blade as the board exits the cut because this blade is spinning very fast and it will, if it pinches, it could throw the board back at you or do all kinds of bad things. So this is more or less a safety feature and it is very handy. I like it a lot. And it came installed on this saw from the factory. It's got a pretty nice um, insert plate here. This is the factory insert plate. It's easy to take in and out. Won't you show us, Ray, how easy that is? Look at that. Wow, that was way too easy. So um, this blade is a 1 8 inch thick cut or kerf. This blade takes 1 8 of an inch of material out exactly. All right, crank her up there, Ray. Uh, I will mention that I bought an aftermarket insert here that is for zero clearance use. Uh, I haven't even used it yet, but I plan to use it someday. All right, there you can get a good look at this blade. I use a glue line rip blade. This one is CMT, and you can see it says glue line rip. It's a good fast cutting rip blade. I don't do a lot of really fine cutting, like um, cross cutting. I don't do a lot of you know veneered goods or anything, so I'm usually just ripping plain old stock, and this will just fly right through it. Okay, let's have a look underneath inside the engine bay. Well, it's not an engine, it's a motor. But let's have a look inside the motor bay here. Now you can see there's the three horsepower, 220 volt motor. It's uh, pretty strong, haven't had any issues with power. We've got these giant gear drive trunnion things here. This is one giant piece of cast steel. And you can see there's a dust port right there that comes right off of the blade. And then there's also this kind of a catch basin underneath where it's sloped and tapered down to the dust exit, which is down there. So it draws dust from right at the blade and it draws dust from inside the air volume of the cabinet, which works very well. Now there's always dust that's gonna escape out the top of the blade, uh, unless you have an overhead dust catch, which I do not, but this is pretty efficient at catching dust. All right, I wanna point out something on this saw that did not come with the saw this wheel right here. I added the wheel because it had this nice uh, angle iron track right here. Now this fence is designed to not have a wheel here. It just has some little friction glide things like some Teflon uh, little pads that go underneath the fence and they glide across the tabletop. I just didn't like it. It was, uh, they would get kind of snagged up a little bit. Uh, transitioning across from the extension table to the cast iron table. So anyway, I just found this wheel and it just happened to be the exact right height. I just kind of welded it to a little plate here and then screwed that to the bottom of the saw. Now there's not too many other accessories that I have for this saw, but it did come with this nice miter gauge that says Delta on it. So this is kind of like a T-slotted miter gauge. It has this little ring under here and it fits down into the T-slot so that when it's in, well, at least that part, cannot lift up. So it stays in there pretty nice. You can see I've added this piece of wood that uh, I've used over the years. This just makes it wider and more handy for me. This is really nice. It's very accurate. Once you lock it in at 90 degrees, it seems to be perfect. You don't have to mess with it again. Now, if you have a table saw that doesn't have an accurate scale for the degrees of your tilt, 
you can get one of these little digital angle gauges. These are so handy. You just turn it on, place it onto the surface, press the zero button so it is calibrated to the table. If your table is not absolutely level, it doesn't matter. And then you're gonna stick it on your blade and it will reference however uh, angled your blade is relative to the tabletop. You can see that we're within one tenth of one degree of being at 45 at the lockout position. Well, that's all I have to say for now about this saw and table saws in general. But we'll catch you next time where we'll review some more tools and talk about some more shop stuff. Take care.